Good morning, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be getting started shortly here. Just a little past the top of the hour. But while we wait for everyone to get in and join us today, I wanted to send out some intro questions. These are completely anonymous. Feel free to give them an answer. We're just curious about you as a Libby user. Sorry. So we all are getting the shaky cam for a moment there while I get everything set up. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. If you're just coming in, I have some intro questions up on the screen. If you want to answer those for us, that'd be great. We're just curious about you as a Libby user. And we'll get started in about one minute. Welcome, we'll be getting started in one minute here. If you'd like, you can fill out the intro questions we have on the screen. I'll be closing them shortly, but they are completely anonymous. All right, and it looks like our attendee numbers have slowed down. So I'm going to get us started here. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to close those intro questions out. Uh, thank you if you were able to participate. Uh, and now let's get rolling. So welcome to our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar. This is our second and final day at your library. Today we will be taking you through our Libby Deep Dive where we look at four of our favorite Libby tips and tricks. Before we dive in, we just wanted to introduce ourselves. My name is Joe and I'm here from Overdrive. Uh, you may or may not have already heard of the Overdrive platform if you've used the Overdrive app, our original app in the past, or if you uh, it were introduced to Overdrive through Libby. Either way, we're happy to have you here, uh, and we are so excited to be moving forward with the Libby app today. Now, I'm here uh, as a part of our training program on the Digital Bookmobile team. Uh, so when we're not staying safe at home and hosting webinars like these, we have a truck that goes across the US and Canada and visits different libraries and schools, helping people just like yourselves get started or learn more about Libby. Um, on the Bookmobile, I'm, uh, as Marissa would probably say, responsible for the boring stuff. I handle our tour route and our budget, and I usually stay back here in Cleveland, Ohio, and map everything out for her, but I should give her a chance to say hi. Hello, good morning. Um, as Joe said, I'm the other half of the digital bookmobile team, and I get the non boring half of our job, haha, <laughs> Joe, um, which is traveling with our digital bookmobile. Um, so, in my three years in working at Overdrive, I've helped thousands of people um, either learn the basics of Libby or teaching more advanced users the tips and tricks that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So, we're really excited to be um, here and passing on this knowledge to you. We are so excited to be here. And uh, let's, you know, let's dive in. Let's see some of these amazing features. Before we do that, however, I have to still bring the boring stuff with some housekeeping. Just as a heads up, we do have closed captions enabled for this webinar. They should already be turned on on your screen. Uh, they appear at the bottom like a subtitle. If you don't see those and would like them on, or if you want to turn them off or adjust them at all, look for the button in your Zoom meeting controls that says CC, and there's a little arrow next to it. Tap on that, and you'll be able to adjust how these appear. If you have questions for Marissa and I, feel free to ask those throughout the entire webinar. While Marissa is taking us through the four tips and tricks we have set up for you, I'll be in the Q&A answering your questions. We'll also set aside some time at the end of our session today, or we'll take any of the questions that uh, came up while we were presenting and show them off on screen directly in the Libby app with how you can do the different things you ask. Now we are recording our session this morning. Of course, we do this for a variety of reasons, uh, but the main one is we want you to have something you can look back on. If you would like to see something again, if there's something you missed, 
the recording is going to be your best friend. This way you can just kind of watch as we go through this session and not worry about following along and getting lost because you know you can always you know, review anything. You'll get an email tomorrow morning from Zoom that includes a link to this recording. So just keep in mind and keep an eye out for that email. If you could help us uh, improve by filling out our survey, that would be fantastic. It will pop up when you exit the webinar, and that's just a few quick questions to let us know what you thought of today. And then last, we will be connecting our iPads into the session today. Sometimes when we do this, Zoom shrinks the display. Doesn't happen to everyone, but if it happens to you, we have some few simple steps just a few quick clicks to fix this. I will be sending that out in the chat once we start getting connected. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's look at our tips and tricks for today. First, we're going to show you how to filter out unwanted titles with using preferences. Then we'll show you how to refine lists to find the books you like as fast as possible. Then we'll go into probably our favorite tip of them all, tags, what they are, how we use them, and some ways you can use them as well. And then we'll wrap up with making and exporting notes and highlights. Great for students in school, those of you in book club, or if you're just like Marissa and I and you like to make notes while you're reading. I'm going to hand it over to Marissa now, let her get all connected into our demo library. And we're gonna dive in with our very first tip. All right, thank you, Joe. Let me get connected here. And while I get connected, Joe is going to chat out the instructions for changing your Zoom ratio. Um, you only need to change your Zoom ratio if you cannot see the navigation bar at the bottom of my screen right now. So there's five icons there, search, library, menu, shelf, and timeline. If you cannot see those icons um, in that navigation bar, then that means Zoom's just shrunk your screen a little bit. But um, those instructions that Joe just put out in the chat will fix that. It's just a couple of clicks. So it'll take a few seconds and then you'll be good to go. So we're gonna jump right in here so that we can um, have as much time for questions at the end as possible. So I'm gonna start with our first tip of the day, which is um, setting preferences so that you can filter out unwanted books. And to do this, I'm going to jump into a list. We're gonna pretend we're browsing through the library here. So I'm gonna pop into this available now filter. And we're gonna look at, at um, all of the available titles that my demo library has to offer. Now, when you want to set a preference, you're going to tap on the preferences button on the left side of any list that you're looking at. And this is going to give you filters that you can apply in Libby that are saved. And when I say saved, that means you can open and close Libby as many times as you'd like. You could uh, close down Libby and then come back in a month or two and open her back up. And she's still going to be filtering content based on your preferences, if you have any of those preferences set. So let's talk about what instances might you want to set a preference so that Libby's continually filtering your lists. Well, by far the most common preference that I see when talking to library patrons across North America is language. So right now when I'm looking for a book in Libby, I'm seeing books in any language if my library has purchased, you know, books in Japanese and German and Spanish. However, much to my French teacher's dismay, I can only speak English. Um, so I only want to see books that are written in English or spoken in English if it's audio. I'm not going to be able to uh, read or listen to any any of the other languages. So I typically have my English preference set. Format is also a common preference. 
I've met quite a few people who just like audiobooks. They can't really um, strain their eyes reading a book anymore, so they only want to listen to audio. I've met people in the reverse. They like to read. They hate to listen. And so if you have a specific format that you enjoy and the other one is not an option for you, then you can set a preference for one of those formats and Libby will then filter the other format out of the collection. So you won't come across, you know, audiobooks if you're a book lover or vice versa. The last one I'll talk about here that's pretty popular is audience. So right now when I'm looking for a book, I see um, content that falls into any of our audience categories from juvenile all the way to mature. Now I point this one out for anyone who has kiddos in their lives that have their own device. So if you do, then you can set a juvenile or a YA preference. And that will make it so when they're looking for a book on their tablet or smart device or computer, then they're not going to come across Fifty Shades of Grey because Libby's going to be filtering out that general or mature content. Now, once you set your preferences, I'm going to just stick with my English one here. Make sure you're scrolling down on this screen here and tapping apply. It can be tricky because it looks like there's not a button there, but definitely scroll down, tap apply preferences, and you'll know that your preferences have applied because there will be a number indicator right next to that preferences button thereafter. So this is just Libby's way of saying, hey, you set a preference, I'm filtering something out based on that preference. So it's just like a heads up for you. And again, moving forward, Libby's going to continue to filter that content out. I now will only see books that are written in English or spoken in English uh, if it's an audiobook. So that is tip number one, how to filter out unwanted content with preferences. I'm now going to move into tip number two. And this is going to be the, the sister tip to tip number one. It's going to be refining your browsing and searching so that you can find the books that you like faster. And we'll hang out in this list here. We can see I'm starting out with 44,000 books, 22,000 audiobooks, and then 3,000 magazines. So this is quite a list here. I could be looking through this list all day if... Um, if I had the time, I, I love to look for books, but that would be a monster list. So let's start narrowing this down. And to do that, I'm going to uh, give a little prompt here. So let's pretend my mom and I are going to go on a road trip. And the parameters for the book that I need to search for are that it needs to be in the audiobook format. My mom loves mystery historical fiction. So those are the subjects that I'm going to narrow this down by. And then we're also going to look for a new release. My mom um, is a big reader. So if we go for a new release, the, it's unlikely that she's read it yet. So I'm going to come down to refine. Now refine is right across from preferences. And I want to point the difference out here is that while Refine's filters look the same, format, subject, language, audience, the difference is that they are temporary. So these filters are going to revert back to their default the next time you search or browse for a book. Preferences stick and stay, refining is temporary. That's the difference there. So I'm gonna come up to format first, and we need an audiobook for this road trip. We don't have a Tesla that will allow us to read and drive at the same time. So we will listen instead. We've dropped down to 22,000 audiobooks, but now I'm gonna add my subjects. So I'll go to subject and tap on mystery. 
Now we can see that numbers drop to just about 3,000. But I'm going to come back to refine and choose a second subject. And the reason I'm doing that is because while my mom likes history books, she prefers, uh, or mystery books, she prefers mystery historical fiction. So I'm going to tap on that second subject here. And you'll see that number has dropped to 229. So even though I added a second subject, that number didn't go up, it went down. And that's because I am currently looking at a list of books that are both mystery and historical fiction at the same time. So this is not a list of mystery books and uh, historical fiction books, or, or I should say mystery or historical fiction. It's a list of books that are uh, historical fiction and mystery. So you can really find niche subjects in Libby by adding additional subjects. The sweet spot is between uh, two to three. Um, sometimes you can get away with four. If you get higher than that, then Libby's gonna give you maybe one result because there's not a lot of books that fit under multiple genres um, once you pass four genres or four subjects. So between two or three is the sweet spot if you'd like to find those niche subjects. Now, 229 audiobooks is a decent number. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that number, but I'm gonna come back to refine and now we're gonna sort this list. I want to sort this list by release date. I wanna find a newer book. So I'm gonna come down to sort by and select release date. And now the newest titles are showing up at the top. And then as we make our way down this list, they're going to get older and older. So that is, um, almost the end of tip number two. We've narrowed our list down um, from almost 70,000 titles to 229. The last thing I wanna show you in finding books faster is how to jump um, across the pages within your searching and browsing. So let's say we're scrolling through here. We've not come across a book that we want to read yet <clears throat> and we realize oh my gosh we've seen this list of books over and over again so I need to jump to uh, farther down the list uh, maybe I need to jump to page four that's when I'm going to tap on page two of ten and then select where I want to jump into this list so that I don't have to continue scrolling past books I've already seen in that list. That is a tip more for if you are, a you know, you love a specific subject or genre and you continually go back to that, maybe mystery thriller. I know that's a popular one. You know, like I've seen the same first five pages over and over again. You can skip down that list. So that is tip number two how to uh, refine your browsing and searching to find books faster. I'm now gonna move into tip number three. And this is, uh, as Joe referred to, um, our favorite tag of them all. I loved, I love, our favorite tip of them all. I love tags, there we go. Um, they are a way that you can organize books in Libby. <clears throat> so if you had used the OverDrive app in the past, You'll know that Overdrive has a history list and then it has a wish list. But in Libby, tags are much more robust because you can create as many lists as you'd like and you can name those lists whatever you'd like. And so I'm gonna show you how to create lists in Libby and then I'm gonna show you where you can find those tag lists and how to export them out of the app, whether you wanna email them to a friend or print them out so that you can take it over to book club. So you'll notice that as we make our way through this uh, list here, we have borrow, play sample, and then tag. Tag is always gonna be the third option next to the jacket cover. If you want to tag a book, oh, 
bump my mouse there. You'll tap on tag. And then you can use this menu uh, to either create a new list and add it to that, or you can tap on any of the existing tags that you've already created to add it to one of those. Now, you'll notice there are two types of tags. There are regular tags and there are smart tags. Regular tags are tags that you create, you come up with their names, and you use them to organize your own books. Now, on my regular tags, I have a to-be-read list, I have a cooking list, and then I have a list of some beach reads. Smart tags are tags that Libby creates, and these are, they automatically come with Libby, and they have smarts to them. The first smart tag that you see, that little red receipt, that is the borrowed smart tag. The borrowed smart tag, it automatically attaches itself to any books that you borrow in the Libby app. I'm going to show you why this is really handy here in a moment. I'll also show you how to delete it a little later on in the tip if you don't want Libby auto tagging your borrowed books. The next tag we have here is the Notify Me magazine tag. The Notify Me tag is currently specific to magazines. And what it does is the first time you borrow a magazine, Libby will prompt you to create your Notify Me tag. And then you can add all of your favorite magazines to the Notify Me tag. And Libby will just start giving you a notification every time a new issue is added to your library. So that can be handy and save you some time as well. The last tag here is the sampled tag. So typically it looks like a little piece of cake. I changed the name so it says sampled instead. And what this does is if you play or read a sample, um, then Libby will give you a little indicator. It'll autom automatically tag your book as sampled. And uh, I will show you how that comes in handy here in a second as well. So smart tags, borrowed, notify me, and sample, those have special abilities. And then regular tags are just ones that you create uh, for your own benefit. Now I'm gonna come up and create a new tag so I can show you that process. I'm gonna tap on new tag here and I can name that tag whatever I'd like. Now, you can get really creative with how you start your lists. So Joe, he uses tags to keep track of books that he wants to read with his niece when she comes over uh, for play dates. I use my tags sometimes for gift giving. I have a father-in-law who is an avid history buff. He loves to read history books and it's pretty much the only gift I can give him that doesn't collect dust in the closet. And so I'm constantly challenged with having to come up with history books to buy him over the holidays. So what I've started doing is create a tag just for him on my Libby account as I look through uh, my collection, my library's collection throughout the year, looking for my own books, and I come across books he might like, I'll tag him in his list. And then when the um, holidays come around, Father's Day is coming up, I will open that list up at the bookstore, pick a few books from my list, and save a lot of time. So you really can be creative with the lists that you come up with. You can also be simple. Sometimes I need to be in the mood for a mystery title. I'm not always in the mood. So when I am, I'll pop into my mystery tag and I'll pick one of the books there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to name this mystery and I could add a description. I know what this means, but you are welcome to add a little description there. And then I'm going to tap on go or you could tap on done and you'll see that tag show up in your searching or browsing. Now, this is one of the reasons I love tags so much because let's start making our way down this list. If you're looking for a book and you come across a book that has your borrowed smart tag on it, 
that is a great indicator that you don't even need to read the description of this book. You've borrowed it in Libby already. That means you've read it unless you didn't finish it, which in that case, why would you borrow it again? So that saves you a little bit of time. I read so much sometimes that the title and the jacket cover aren't enough for me to spark that memory. But this borrowed smart tag, that is good enough for me to know. I can just skip over that as I'm searching. Now I come across a fine summer's day. Well, that has my to be read tag. So that means I added it to my wish list and I'm probably gonna borrow it straight away because I've already expressed interest in it. I know that I want to read that. And then I do believe I have a sample tag unless I deleted it. Looks like I might have. The sample tag comes in handy because sometimes, I think this is um, something that's more common with audiobooks. <clears throat> you'll listen to the sample, you'll play that sample, and you'll be like, that voice, is not for me. I can't listen to it for seven to 10 hours. So you can have that indicator that you've listened to that sample. You don't have the borrow tag on it. So that means you never borrowed it. It's likely that that narrator was not your jive. Same thing could happen for eBooks. Maybe you read, you play, you read that sample, you read the first couple chapters, you just weren't into it. So you left it be. So those are the three tags, the three smart tags, borrowed, sampled, and then notify me, and how you can create a tag. Now I'm gonna go over to the shelf here. So where my loans and holds live, you'll see those filters up at the top of the screen. We also have a tag filter. So if you tap on tag here, you will see all of your lists. So we can see all my regular tags. Here's that tag I just created with you. And let's go ahead and pop into one of these lists. I'll go into my to be read list so you can see it has 41 titles in it. So that's a nice long list here. There we go. Here are all the books that I've ever tagged as to be read. Now, one thing I wanna point out I did talk about this a little bit in our getting started session yesterday. So you might have heard this already, but there's an icon over on the right side of the screen. There is a, it's a library card with a plus sign. That's an indicator that this book is available to borrow right now. There's also a calendar with a clock. That is an indicator that the book is currently on a waiting list. Now, it doesn't matter which icon you see here. If you tap on that icon, not only can you borrow or place a hold directly from the screen without having to go to the details page and jump all over the app, you can also compare the availability of that book across all of your libraries. So I, we talked yesterday and are getting started. As a Massachusetts resident, you have access to eight collections. So this is a game changer for you. You'll be able to see all eight of the collections appear down here. We can see I have one copy available at my demo library, three copies, at your library and then this is checking availability because it doesn't um, it's not part of my second demo library here so this is going to not even be an option for me so a little tip there if you want to compare your books across your libraries i'm going to drop that menu out of the way i'm going to tap right above it and the last thing i want to say about these icons is that you're going to see them um, pretty much everywhere in the Libby app. You'll see them in your tags, you'll see them on the library tab when you're browsing, and you'll see them when you're searching with that magnifying glass as well. So a nice little mini tip within my larger tip here. We are going to finish out talking about tags. Up in this right-hand corner, you'll see the actions button. If you tap on actions, this is where you can rename your tag or delete it. 
I want to point out that delete tag for anyone who might want to delete the borrowed smart tag. And then we also can export our tag. This is going to be taking this list out of the Libby app uh, for sharing or printing. So I'm going to tap on export tag. We have a few different file types depending on what you'd like to do with it. If you'd like to take it offline, I would choose spreadsheet. Table is more an online if you want to put it on a web page. I'm just going to choose that for our example. And this is going to take us to the data export page. So when you're on the data export page, you will see all of your books down at the bottom. And then on an iOS device, so I'm using Safari, that's the web browser that I'm using because I'm on an iPad. I see the share button up in the top right hand corner, this square with the arrow pointing up. The location of this button will change depending on your web browser. So if you're going to be using uh, Firefox or Google Chrome um, or I blinked on this yesterday too, Microsoft Edge, then you will have um, it, this button here can be in a different location. Uh, so keep that in mind. But if you tap on the share icon, then you will get the options to send your uh, tag list out in an email um, and a text message here. Or if you scroll down, you'll also have the ability to print your list out if you'd like a physical copy of that tag list. So that is the last part of tip number three, all about tags. Like Joe said, that's our favorite tip. I just love to create lists. I have so many lists on my own, uh, my own Libby account. Um, I love to be organized. So that is tip number three, how to create tag lists. I'm now going to move into our final tip of the day. And this is all about how to make um, define words and make notes and highlights in your ebooks. So from my shelf, I'm going to open up my ebook here, my copy of Pride and Prejudice. And I'm just going to drop those menus out of the way by tapping in the center of the screen. So when you would like to define a word in an ebook, what you're gonna do is you're going to use your finger if you're on a smartphone or tablet, and you're gonna hold it on the word that you'd like to define. If you're on a computer using libbyapp.com, you're going to click it, you're gonna click and hold. I'm gonna move my mouse slightly to the left and I'm gonna use my finger because I'm on a smart device to hold the word peevish. And you see it turns blue. And so as soon as the word that you wanna define turns blue, that's when you can lift your finger up off the screen. So I wanna make it clear, we're not tapping. That's gonna turn the page or just bring your menus up and down, up and down. You're going to hold your finger on the word. Then you can come down to define. And Libby's going to give us the dictionary definition from the English dictionary. We also see some synonyms here as well. And then underneath explore, you could also translate. That comes in handy if you're reading a book from a different country and occasionally they throw in a word from that country's native language and you're like, uh, I don't know what uh, dwat means, then you could go in there and you could translate that into English. Something else I want to point out as well, something I love about this dictionary in, uh, or this define feature in Libby rather, is that you can, find, you can define um, pr uh, proper nouns. So if you're a nonfiction reader um, and, or you like to read history or something like that, and they refer to a famous art piece that you've never heard of, or a piece of music, or um, maybe a biography like Grant, where they're saying a lot of uh, po politicians' names and you don't know exactly who those people are, 
if you define that word in Libby, you'll see the Wikipedia entry for it. So you can even see there's a Wikipedia button down under here. If this was a proper noun, we would have seen the Wikipedia blurb instead of the dictionary definition. So I wanna point that out because as a nonfiction reader myself, it really can come quite handy. Now, I'm gonna drop the dictionary off the screen. I'm just gonna tap right above that menu. And now let's go ahead and place a highlight. So I'm just gonna make it easy on myself. And I'm gonna highlight this very first sentence in the paragraph. Just like with defining words, I'm moving my mouse slightly to the left, just so you can see. I'm taking my finger, I'm holding the word the, and now that the word the is blue, now I'm dragging my finger across the screen. Again, you're not tapping, you're holding your finger on the screen, and then as soon as your passage turns blue, that's when you can lift it up, and you have the option to highlight. So we have a few different colors here if you'd like to stay organized. I'll do green. Let's place a green highlight. And now my highlight is in place. Now, if you're in something like book club or you just like to make some notes along with your highlights, what you can do is this time you can tap, tap on your highlight and your note will, uh, your note menu is going to drop down. So you can make um, a larger note than just these four words, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna say this is a note, that will be that, and I will drop it off the screen by tapping below. And now that note is in place. So I'm gonna page forward here. I'm gonna tap, 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 all right. And I'm going to now reference a note that I made earlier in the book. And to do that, we're going to tap on the center of the screen. That will bring our menus up. And then there is a icon here that looks like three bookmarks sitting in a row. It's the very last icon of the three. I'm gonna tap on that. And we can see all of the notes and highlights that I've made within this book. Now, Libby in this view is just going to give you a quick little blurb. So I want to see the full highlight here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on that note and highlight. And I can see here my highlight is placed. It goes across two pages. Now, if I want to see the note that I made with this highlight, all we have to do is tap on the highlight and the note will drop down. So that's how you can view your notes and highlights if you still have the book borrowed from the library. So this book is on my shelf. I'm within my lending period. It's not due for another uh, 14 days. However, sometimes you're gonna make notes and highlights and the book's going to return to the library and then you need to see those notes and highlights for book club or or whatever reason that you might need to see them. You can still view your notes and highlights for books that have returned to the library even when they are no longer on your shelf. So I'm going to show you how to do that to wrap up. The best and easiest way to find your notes and highlights for books that have returned to the library is to go to the search icon and look for that book. So we're going to type in the guest list. We'll pretend that was my book club book and I'm going to search for it. Now, here's another reason that borrowed smart tag comes in handy. That's that indicator I borrowed this book. I know that that's the book that I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the jacket cover. This is going to take me to the details page. On the details page of any book that you've borrowed in the past, you'll have a reading journey. Your reading journey uh, is 
your history of any of the actions that you've taken with that book. So it'll show you how many times you've picked the book up, how long you've spent reading it. This is clearly a demo book, uh, five minutes, five, 12 minutes reading that book. Okay, so there's two ways from this page that you can find your notes and highlights. The first is gonna be up in this actions button. This should look familiar because we have the ability to export. This time, instead of our tags, we're gonna export our reading data. That's gonna be our notes and our highlights. Again, you can send them in an email, you can print them out following the same steps I showed you in tip number three. Now, maybe that's just like a couple steps too far. You just wanted to quickly reference a note or highlight that you made. So what you can do instead is scroll down and then underneath the timeline for the title, you'll see your highlights listed out by percentage and you just have to tap on each individual one and it will show you the full highlight and then in quotations underneath, you'll also see the uh, note that you made as well. So you can find those notes and highlights even after the title has returned to the library. So I wanted to show you how to do that. All right, that wraps up our last and final tip for the day. I'm going to hand things back over to Joe. And we're going to get into some next steps. All right. Thanks, Marissa. And thank you all. Uh, to you know, kind of move on to some next steps here. We want to wrap up with a mini quiz. So we wanna test what you just learned with Marissa, and then we'll open the floor back up to Q and A. So start thinking of your questions now. You can even start sending them through. Uh, in the meantime, while we do these questions, they're going to appear automatically on your screen. They are entirely anonymous. And let's see, here we go. So we'll start with question number one. If you want to use a temporary, if you want to temporarily filter a list or search result, which type of filter do you use? Preference, refine, or unsure? I was in such a zone of listening, I forgot how to speak. <laughs> and I'll close this in five, four, three, two, one. All right, y'all got it correct. So when you want to do a temporary filter on your search results on your list, if you open up a different curated collection in Libby, just tap on that refine button and you can use any of the features you see in here. You can add a subject, you could uh, sort how the results pop up, if whether it is from popular or if it's release date. If you head into preferences, however, these are going to be your permanent searches. So if you add an English preference, you are always going to only see books in English in Libby unless you go back in and edit that preference. So like Marissa mentioned, uh, language is super popular, uh, format is super popular, and then of course the age range is really popular. Great work, everyone. Let's see, there we go, sorry, my screen was blocking. Okay, for question number two, here's a true or false. You can add multiple subject filters to find niche subjects in Libby, true or false. And I'll close this in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so the correct answer is true, like Marissa showed us. Her mom doesn't just want mystery, she wants mystery historical fiction. We want those hoop skirts and corsets. If you add a subject, in this case, we have romance on the screen, tap refine again and add your second subject, romance fantasy in this example you're seeing on the screen. So now we have two filters and this shows us both subjects combined. This is an all fantasy and all romance. This is that combo of fantasy romance. This is a wonderful option to help you really get solid search results and limit how much you're seeing on the screen. We recommend using anywhere from two to four subject filters, anything beyond that, and you'll 
have very likely zero results. <laughs> so uh, also keep in mind, it can be hard to find super niche things like a comedy horror. You might only have a few results there anyway. All right, for question number three, what are the three types of smart tags? Borrowed, sampled, notify me, to be read. So what are those three types of tags with abilities? And I'll close this in five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's look at it. So there are three smart tags that are made for you in Libby. And let's just go to our shelf and tap on the tags filter. So we can see we've got all of our tags here. The first one is borrowed, that receipt emoji. This tracks every book you borrow. Then we have the notify me tag, which lets you be notified when new magazine issues are available. And then last, we have that piece of cake emoji, which Marissa renamed on hers in the demo today to sampled. So anytime you read or play a sample of a title, you are going to have it automatically added to this tag. So if you decided you, you, know, you really liked that one sample, maybe I wanna check out and read that book. Now, for those of you who answered to be read, we gotcha, that was a trick question. You can create your own to be read tag. It's similar to Overdrive's wishlist feature. But basically, when it comes to regular tags, you can make as many as you like, as, um, as simple or as massive as you like to go. Like Marissa mentioned, she makes gift list tags. I make tags for my niece, so I have titles ready to read when it is story time. And then our last question here, where can you find your notes and highlights after a title is returned to the library on its due date? So can you find those in your tags on the shelf, in the reading journey on the title details page, or in your timeline? And we've got, looks like we've got all the answers in, so I'll close the poll. All right, and y'all got it correct. <laughs> <laughs> so when a title uh, has returned to the library, but you still want to reference notes and highlights you made, you need to get to that title details page. You can search for it and then open up the reading journey. From here, you can see all of the ways you've engaged with the book, and you could simply tap on where it says a highlight, and it will pull up your full highlight and full note, whether or not the book is currently checked out to you. And with that, that wraps up our questions. I'm going to let Marissa pull Libby back up on her screen. And we'll get into Q&A. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send those through now. Uh, we would love to answer some questions for you. So our first question that's come through is from Gail. How do I participate in an intro to Libby webinar? Unfortunately for your library specifically, that was yesterday, but I will be including a link to the recording of that presentation uh, in the email that will be sent out tomorrow. So not only will you get a recording to today's full session, you can also watch yesterday's getting started session. Now we are going to start hosting in August monthly getting started webinars. Uh, the information won't change. Uh, it's just an opportunity for everyone to take uh, a chance and get started with Libby. So if you'd like to see it live, I'm going to uh, put the link to sign up for that in the answer in Q&A. Uh, second question we have coming through, uh, where is the preferences button in the app? So this is a great question. To see both the refine button and the preferences button, you either need to be in a search, like in search results or in a list. So let's hop into the popular tag up at the top here. And then you're going to have that everything in what's popular. Uh, and then there will be a darker bar that pops up that you can either go into refine or you can tap on where it says preferences. And can we do that one more time, Marissa? So just go into a list. We'll go into these overdrive staff picks. 
And it's the same thing, even though we're in a different spot here, preferences and refine. Do you mind uh, doing the, this other question while I answer, uh, while I pull up the sign up? Of course. Thank you. Um, so if you'd like to search by author, then you are going to go into the search. So that's the first icon that you see within the navigation bar. If you tap on that search icon, then up in the search bar, you could type in an author, a title, a magazine, or series name. So let's search for Michelle Obama. I'm going to tap on search. And we can see, um, looks like, Becoming is showing as the third search result here. So we were able to uh, find her book. And then again, as Joe mentioned, that preferences and refine, those also show up when you're searching. So when you're browsing using any of the filters or the lists on the library page, or when you're searching using that magnifying glass. So I do talk about navigating the app whether it's searching or browsing or viewing your shelf in the getting started session. So you can always go back and watch that recording if you'd like to get some of that more basic information about Libby as well. Great questions. Yeah, great questions, everyone. Well, we still have a few minutes left. Does anyone have any questions? Any other questions? Please feel free to send them through. Um, while you're typing, I want to take a moment. Uh, this is something we talk about in the getting started session, but I think it's always a great reminder, especially for those of you who are just joining us today for tips and tricks, because you may already be a little more familiar with Libby. You can always reach out to our tech support team directly within the Libby app or get some info from Libby herself you'll head into the menu, the center of your navigation bar. And then underneath help and support, tap on get some help. You can use the search bar up at the top to type in a question, whether it's a keyword or a short phrase, like in this case, we'll type in return. So books automatically return themselves to the library on their due date. But if you wanted to return a book early, Libby will have some help article suggestions. We could tap on returning books and it will show us the full steps to do that. She's letting us know they return themselves, but if you wanna do it, here you go. Now, if this wasn't the answer you were looking for, at the bottom of the article, you'll see ask our support team. If you tap on where it says ask our support team, this will allow you to choose if you're having a problem with what you searched for, if you just have a question about it, or if you have an idea for the app for the future, you can pick any one of these and it will send an email to our tech support team directly so you can get uh, any additional help or answers you might need. They do all of their correspondence via email and they will respond as soon as they can. Uh, great question here. Can anyone else see your notes and highlights once a book is returned? No, everything is locked to you. So, um, if you made notes and highlights in a physical library book, yeah, everyone would be able to see it. But the great thing about Libby is she is built for privacy and keeping your information safe. Uh, that is extended to your notes and highlights. It's only in your version that anything you might have marked up is visible. It is worth mentioning that if you're using Libby on multiple devices and you use the setup code to sync all of your library cards across those devices, you will be able to access all of your notes and highlights and your timeline. Um, anything that's individual to you is going to sync across those devices. So if you made notes and highlights on your phone and then you switched over to your uh, tablet for book club, then you will still be able to access all of those notes and highlights. Right. And also worth mentioning, if you are sharing a device, if you have multiple devices, but one of those is shared and you use that setup code, it's going to sync everything. So if someone else is using it, they'll be able to see whatever is uh, on, on that device from you. 
I currently use OverDrive and Hoopla. Is Libby replacing these or just another way to access books online? So we're from OverDrive. Uh, Libby is our new app. We have created the Libby app uh, to replace the OverDrive app, yes. Uh, the OverDrive app will be going away. Um, there's no specific date yet, but the end is, is coming up. Uh, we're looking between 2022 and 2023. Uh, so just kind of keep in mind that Libby is the replacement for the OverDrive app. Hoopla has nothing to do with us. Uh, that is just another service that your library provides. Will tag show for all your libraries at once? This is a great question. So one of the really cool features about Libby, uh, and part of the reasons we're uh, we're so excited about the updates with the Libby app, is that Libby is designed that if you are using multiple library cards, like y'all are with your um, reciprocal lending at in Massachusetts, uh, the really cool thing about Libby is that you only have one shelf. So the big deal uh, with the OverDrive app was if you were using multiple cards, you kind of had to switch around. You had to know where the book was borrowed to go to that correct shelf. Libby just has one shelf where all of your books live. And so the same thing is applied for your tags, um, all of these different lists. So we can see here in Marissa's tag list, um, on the right-hand side, there's a majority of those kind of like double blue cards, but then we have this one purple and green card. So that library card color is indicated what library it's from. So it doesn't matter uh, what library you tagged it in, they will all be showing, it, you'll have a different color to let you know, oh, this isn't from the same library, but they will all be in one list. There's no separate list for different libraries unless you create that and you only put certain books from certain libraries there. But since you have all of them in one place, no need to do that. Uh, just another chance to mention it, super cool feature since you have access to multiple libraries, anytime you see this library card appear, so you just need to tap on it and it will give you the ability to place a hold or check out right away from this menu. The cool thing about this is we can see there's a wait list on our purple and green card, but if we scroll down a little bit, we can see all of the other libraries that have it available. So we can find the shortest wait list, like our top one has an unknown wait. So that might, that might mean we no longer have it in our system anymore. Um, but we know with CW Mars, we're only looking at like a four week wait and our last library doesn't have it at all. So great way to kind of look at all of your libraries at once and find the best either list to join or if someone has it available to check out right away. All right, well, since, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, you might occasionally see four colors uh, in this library card. That will only happen if you've placed a hold on the same book at multiple libraries. And there's not, a, a that's not gonna be a benefit to you very often, but if you see that, you know, Library number one has a two week wait and library number two also has a two week wait, then you might want to place a hold on both of those, see what one comes first. So I just want to be clear, it won't always just be two colors here. If you right. do place a hold on multiple libraries, you'll actually see four colors there as well. Great point to bring up. Uh, yeah, that's something we don't get to deal with too much since we have a few, uh, quite a few less libraries to access compared to y'all having a total of eight to go between. But since we only have about a minute left, I just wanted to take a moment here to thank everyone and start to wrap up. So thank you all so much for joining us today for our tips and tricks session. Remember, you'll get an email from Zoom tomorrow morning that includes a link to not only the recording from today's session, but it will also include the recording from our session yesterday. That was our getting started session. If you want to, you can review one or both of them. Uh, and then also, of course, feel free to share those recordings with family and friends, anyone who you think would benefit from meeting Libby. 
uh, when we end the webinar here in just a second. The survey is going to pop up in your web browser. Fill that out for us. Let us know what you thought. We greatly appreciate it. But other than that, thank you all so much for joining us today and happy reading. Happy reading.